Through the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will deliver him and give him glory. I will grant him length of days. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins now and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. And we say together, I confess. Almighty oh God, and to you, my brothers and sisters,
of St. Paul's to Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus, death came to all men, inasmuch as all sin. For if, by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord.
forever marriage. So there are appropriate times. And someone said to me after Mass the other day, too, and that's why I brought it up. She said, Father, I used to be clapped during that last sermon. When I started clapping, somebody said to me, Father, next time you can't clap. <laughs> so I'm not an old fogey. There are appropriate times to clap, but our clapping should be in relationship to our relationship to God and not in terms of adoration of man. So today is the first Sunday of Lent. And on this first Sunday of Lent, we hear the story of the Garden of Eden, and then we hear the story of Jesus being tempted in the of the devil, uh, by the devil in, in the desert. <clears throat> and we wonder, why do we hear these things today? And why does the church tell us to use the disciplines of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving during Lent? And we're supposed to do it all the time. Because if you're here at Ash Wednesday, you heard that the reading said, when you pray, when you fast, when you give alms. It doesn't say if you do it or only when during Lent when you do it. It says when you do it, which means that it's a discipline that we as Christians are called to do all the time. And there's a specific reason for that, that we are called to do prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Yes, we do it because we saw Jesus did it. He prayed, fasted, and gave alms, gave charity to people, healing people. But there's something even more crucial about those particular disciplines that are asked of us. And the reason for that is because of original sin. As we saw, as we heard in that letter from Paul, he said that through the sin of one man, all have been condemned, all become sinners. And then it says, through the righteousness of one man, all have been saved. So when Adam and Eve committed their first sin, they passed on that inclination to sin to us. And the interesting thing about that first sin, when you think about original sin, I mean, you know, we sometimes we think about, oh, there's a stain in our soul that gets washed off at that at baptism. You have all these sort of myths about original sin. But what is original sin in its true meaning? And what it is is the threefold sin of Adam and Eve. And what was that threefold sin? Well, in John's letter, he says, in the first letter of John, he says that it's lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. We say, well, what does that mean? How did Eve do that? Well, if you remember the reading, it said the devils, when, when Eve looked at the tree, she saw that the fruit was pleasing to the eye, good to the taste, and would make her, give her the knowledge of good and evil, make her wise. So that's the crucial, that's the crucial component of us as human beings, as, as human beings who, who, who are children of Adam, that we have this natural proclivity to have lust of our eyes, to have <clears throat> uh, lust of our flesh, and pride of our life. So what does that mean by that? What do I mean by that? Well, <clears throat> when you look at what Jesus, the example that Jesus gives us in the Gospel, it says that the devil tempted Jesus by asking to turn stone into bread. That was a lust for food, a lust of his flesh. He wasn't satisfied. He'd been fasting for 40 days. He must have been hungry. The devil said, well, if you're hungry, eat something. So sort of the desire for flesh, the desire for flesh, to, to complete our flesh in some way. You know, Americans, we have a lot to eat, so that's really not an issue for us. But there are many things that we lust for in our flesh. Could be gluttony, could be sexual sins, pornography, all those kinds of things that are there. All the different things that we want to look at, that we would like to take for ourselves, to our body, that ruin our body, that pollute our body. So that, and what's the remedy for that? The remedy for that is to implement the discipline of fasting in our bodies, to prepare our bodies, to keep our bodies pure and clean, not only physically, but also mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So that's why we're asked to fast, because that goes right to the root of what original sin did to us. The first part was the lust, of the, the lust of the flesh. And then it said it was pleasing to the eye, the lust of the eye. 
So, and how did Jesus tell us to reverse that for us or give us an example of that? Well, it said that the devil took him up to the um, up to the mountain. And look at all the kings of the world and said, I'm going to give these all to you if you just worship me. Pleasing to the eye. He could have whatever he wanted if I and worship the devil. And we have to ask ourselves, how many things do we lust for, do we want that keep us away from God? The consumerism of our society, the things that we want to watch on the TV and, and, and on the internet, all these things that are out there that keep us and distract us from our relationship with God, for living as a child of God, a son of God, that God created Adam to be a son, and Adam did not necessarily follow through. But Jesus, who, was, who is the son, denied the devil his due and said, no, I will only worship the Father. I won't worship God. So, how do we resolve, how do we, how do we correct that greed that is in our lives? We do it through almsgiving, through charity. So rather than accumulate, and we look at how do we give? How do we dispose of ourselves, our things from ourselves? How do we serve others rather than serve ourselves? So again, almsgiving is a discipline that goes to the root of what original sin did to us. And then, the other thing that Eve heard, Adam and heard, was that it would make them gods. They would become like God. They would have knowledge of good and evil. And Eve said, I can deal with that. And how many of us have the same thing? I'm always right. I know it's right. Pride of life, as John tells us in, in, in one time. So that's the pride of life. And how did Jesus give us an example to correct that? It says that the devil took him up to the top of the temple and said, throw yourself down. God will take care of you. In other words, you can do it because God's going to take care of you. Because you can do whatever you want because God knows that you're right. That pride of life. And that's the third aspect of original sin that we inherited from Adam and Eve. That by using the disciplines of prayer and fasting and by using, at this point, the the, the discipline of prayer, where we acknowledge that we're not number one in the world, that God is. We're not number one in our life, but that God is. And prayer teaches us humility. It reverses that desire of being number one and to place ourselves in humility before God and then before others. So, as we reflect on this, the readings this first Sunday, we look at the issues and, and the disciplines that the church has asked us to do, of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and say, how can I implement that, as I, as I said on Wednesday, in this boot camp of Lent? And that's like a boot camp where we sort of re reconnect ourselves to those disciplines and do them in such more intently, do them more, more uh, consciously, so that as we learn them, we learn those behaviors, then we can carry some of them through beyond Lent. Social science tells us that if you want to develop a good habit, that if you do it for, consciously for 30 days straight, you can ingrain it into your muscle, into your, into your muscle memory, into, into your memory. Church gives us 40 days in order to ingrain that into our muscle memory. The attitudes of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And why 40? Because if we listen again to scripture, we know that 40 is the number for the earth. And 10 is the number of perfection. But the church tells us this is the perfect time to clean up those earthly things in our lives and to redeem them, those things which have been redeemed by Jesus Christ through his death on the cross and through his resurrection with the Father. He has destroyed the power of Satan in our lives. He has destroyed the power of evil in our lives. He's destroyed the desire our eyes, the desire of our flesh and our pride of life. By his example, but also by his way of life. And if we can learn how to do that in our own lives, then we will learn how to follow the crucified Lord. And that's what this is all about. It's about that relationship, about becoming the adopted son of God in 
in mod and by modeling the sum of cut lengths. God bless you all. Bless the planet. Now place before our compassionate God our needs and the needs of the whole world. For all believers, that they would stand temptation and follow the Lord's path. We praise the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For those who govern nations, that they seek the path of justice in all their decisions and actions. We praise the Lord. thoughtless words and actions hurt others, that they be open to the grace of repentance and amend their lives. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For the faithful, elect, catechumens, and candidates, that they respond to the sacredness and challenge of this season. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. Lead the departed into the light of your dwelling place including Philip Burt, that they may gaze upon you for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For all the intentions listed in our parish book of prayer and for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. And this weekend again in particular we pray in a special way for all those who are suffering from the Corbin virus, we pray that they will be healed. We pray that uh, our scientists will find a vaccine. And we pray that those who have died rest in eternal peace. For all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. God of the deserts and of high places, see it up into our hearts. Grant our prayer spoken and silent, which we ask now in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. 